the atomic bomb, the power it has to change lives, countries, and the world. As a person who views all scientific advancement as a positive thing, maybe, just maybe in this instance, humanity should have asked if they really could handle the power of this awesome technology. In 1942, World War II was at its peak. In secret, generals and scientists formed what was known as the Manhattan Project. A top secret gathering of military advisors and scientists were gathered. Leading the project was Julius Robert Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer was a theoretical physicist and a professor of physics at the University of California, Berkeley. Oppenheimer was dubbed the grandfather of the nuclear bomb, along with others for their involvement in the Manhattan Project. At its height, the Manhattan Project grew to employ 130,000 people. How it was a kept secret at the time was astounding. The Manhattan Project was charged with creating the first nuclear bombs the world has ever seen. They were also charged with monitoring the German progression in their attempts to create a nuclear bomb as well. Secrecy was paramount to the project. Even with 130,000 people involved with construction, excavation, military personnel, and etc., many had absolutely no idea what was going on and what they were working to achieve. They were told by military brass that their work was helping to end the current war and possibly any future wars. How wrong they were. They finally did it. The American government created the first weapon of mass destruction. A bomb the size of a car with the ability to level an area the size of a city. On the morning of August 6, 1945, a B-29 Superfortress bomber was being prepped for takeoff and loaded with only one armament, Little Boy, an atomic bomb that weighed around 9,700 pounds but packed the punch of 15 kilotons of TNT. Its destination was Hiroshima, a city that was mainly a shipping town. What caused it to be the target of the first nuclear attack in the world? The Second General Army and the Chugoku Regional Army were stationed there. The city also had large depots of military supplies and was a key center for shipping. The city was home to around 350,000 souls, and the bomb was dropped. It detonated at the altitude of 1,750 feet. In an instant, 70 to 80,000 voices were silenced forever, gone in a flash. 30% of the city's population was gone instantly and another 70,000 injured. Lives lost and changed forever. The destruction was almost total. Infrastructure completely destroyed. Radioactive fallout littered the surrounding areas. So powerful was the destruction, many didn't even know what to do. But it didn't end there. The powers that be wanted another example of the American might on the world. On August 9th, 1945, a second B-29 Superfortress was loaded with the Fat Man, an even larger bomb than Little Boy. It had a destructive power of 21 megatons, and Nagasaki was their target. A manufacturing town, mainly steel and arms were produced in the city, and almost all the population was civilian. Fat Man was detonated over the city's industrial valley midway between the Mitsubishi Steel and Arms Works and the Mitsubishi Orakami Ordnance Works in the north. The only saving grace of this bombing was that half the city was spared due to an explosion happening in a valley, a natural protection from this atrocity of a weapon. 40,000 lives were lost that day and another 60,000 injured. These bombings sent humanity on a track we have yet to jump off, the nuclear age. After World War II, a rivalry between the United States and Soviet Russia formed. An arms race that set the stage for all-out destruction. Nuclear bombs only got larger and larger. Their numbers kept rising. Mutually assured destruction was the term coined, basically stating that if you launch, I launch, and we all burn in hell. Then Russia made this statement. The Tsar Bomba. The largest nuclear detonation ever on the face of this planet. It was Russia's answer to the ever-growing threat from the United States. It was a powerful statement saying we have the biggest, we have the best but such destructive power. Do we, as humanity, even have the ability to wield such powerful weapons? We who are still so instinctive and quick to react emotionally rather than logically and objectively, should we hold the key to weapons that could cause an extinction level event on this planet? I don't think so. We as a society just haven't advanced far enough to hold such awesome destructive power. And as the Cold War wound down, we avoided the war to end all wars, we're slowly beginning to creep back into another one. Unrest in the Middle East, countries taking pot shots at each other, trying to get a rise out of them. We stand on the edge of an abyss right now. Government leaders in the EU and US are playing war like it's a game, pressuring Russia to join in. Just take a look. Airstrikes hit two hospitals and a school. This hour, Turkey has attacked Kurdish fighters on Syrian territory for a third day in a row. Ankara's foreign ministry claims it's acting in what it calls retaliation. Order to act in the toughest way. 
All parties threatening the Russian forces and our infrastructure on the ground are to be destroyed immediately. And Saudi Arabia could be gearing up to launch a ground operation in Syria. It's only a matter of time before we're pushed into the abyss and maybe, just maybe, we don't crawl back out this time. But what do you guys think? I know I kind of got emotional on this one, but it's such a topic that deserves emotion. If you enjoyed this video, throw me a like. If not, well, that's cool. Don't forget to check out my other videos here. And uh, if you enjoy my content, subscribe, keep you up to date on everything. Share the videos. Education is always fun. Well, not, not really, but I mean, share it anyways. I'll see you guys in the next one.